distinguished uh, chief guest, uh, Professor Nick Kamar, Professor uh, Vita, Professor Dr. Vijay, uh, Professor Vaiki Gupta, uh, Dr. Rajiv Gupta, uh, Dr. Vijay, Dr. Mayu Gupta, and other distinguished guests who are, uh, who are assembled here. I think this is a, we've got a very good start to the, to the uh, workshop, to this uh, Global Health Dialogue. Uh, which is, and the discussion has been set uh, in the right direction to the words of wisdom that we heard from the Honorable Member Health CPIO, who gave us the broader vision uh, of the, of how India is, uh, uh, is rapidly marching towards this uh, medical technology hub and how India is developing into a, into a, into a very formidable healthcare system. We, as we all know that at the global level, we have had this a uh, new development agenda, which is the Sustainable Development Goals. And for some of those who have been in touch with the public health dialogue and discourse, you would understand that preceding the Sustainable Development Goals, we had what was called as the Millennium Development Goals. And these goals were primarily looking at mostly on uh, the conditions and issues related to reproductive, maternal and child health care within the space of health. But the boundaries of healthcare have been expanded very significantly by the enactment of these sustainable development goals. And the overarching goal of this SDG 3 that we have, which is focusing on health, is actually to ensure universal health coverage. So good health for all. So if anybody who requires healthcare is able to access healthcare at a cost which does not impose any financial hardship, that is the aspiration. So that everybody who needs healthcare is able to get it, is able to get it at a cost which is not too much, too prohibitive for him to be able to uh, face any kind of financial hardship. So that's the major uh, aspiration that we want to move towards. And in that context, the government of India has created this major flagship program, which is called the Ayushman Bharat, which was being referred to in the earlier session also. But just to elaborate further, there are four different pillars of Ayushman Bharat. One which is focusing on the strengthening of primary health care, which through creation of what we now call as our Ayushman Arokya Mandirs, where we are focusing in, on providing primary health care and as was being rightly said in the first session also, that primary health care that has been being envisioned is not around only vaccines or only maternal and child health care. But is focusing on a broader set of overall healthcare needs covering non communicable diseases which are emerging in a big way in our country and focusing on provision of this repetitive outpatient care to be every day everybody needs, which was being said very rightly in the earlier session also. And perhaps the greatest footfall and the greatest contact of the of the of the common man with the healthcare system is at the primary healthcare level. So that's the first pillar, which is the Health and Wellness Center or the Ayushman Arogya Mandirs, which are providing comprehensive primary health care. The second pillar is what is called as the Pradhan Mantri Jana Arogya Yojana, which is the large insurance program that the government of India has, created, has, has created. The third major pillar <coughs> is the Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission, which is the ABDM, which is creating this digital infrastructure or interconnectedness between these first two pillars, the, the health and wellness centers or the primary health care and the PMJY or the tertiary, secondary and tertiary care. And the final fourth pillar of Ayushman Bharat is the health infrastructure mission or the Abhin, PM Abhin as we call that, which is focusing much more on strengthening the public health infrastructure in various areas that we identified as major priority areas such as creating strong surveillance systems, creating strong diagnostic services, etc. One of the major things, so while these pillars and these programs sit in silos, the most important thing that we need to create is a continuum of care, which is the need of the other. So when we talk about universal health coverage, one of the most important thing is having continuum of care. So we heard Professor Vinod Paul speak in the morning that diabetes ka koi patient agar aata hai aur hum usko detect kar lete hai, Ultimately, uska treatment kaise hoga? Hum ek screening program start karte hai, but then that screening program has to, is only meant to detect that patient. But the real service is in provision of the treatment, for which this patient is now referred to us to a higher level. 
and as a result the, the real need is to have that kind of connectedness between different levels of the healthcare system and this connectedness is both in terms of the services the services that are available at the grassroots level at the primary care level secondary care and tertiary care level and also a digital connectedness which which ensures that there is a longitudinal tra tracking of the patient as the patient moves from one to the other and this is going to be a transformative step towards ensuring affordable healthcare services having a continuum of care established between the different levels of the healthcare which ensure that there is a high coverage of healthcare services and which ensures both the up referral and the down referral is going to be a very very critical step and there are various attempts towards establishing this uh, continuum of care and frankly speaking as i was seeing this video that dr gurg referred to uh, by creation of this kiosk i feel that this kiosk has a very strong potential to establish this continuum of care as we were seeing in the video as well where the patient was speaking from a village in hamirpur to the clinician in sitting in pgi chandigarh i think this is what we are referring to now that is a continuum of care that is being enabled through a telemedicine support system but whatever the technology platform that we eventually incorporate that has to eventually basically serve the purpose of interconnectedness and i think that through the creation of various digital public goods that are being created under the abdm the ayushman bharat digital mission those are basically creating a facilitatory uh, ecosystem that is necessary for such digital public goods to ensure that there is this interconnectedness in different levels of the healthcare system <coughs> the other important thing that this this linkages or continuum of care is also likely to bring about is that a lot of patients who are currently going to secondary and tertiary care which can actually be taken care at primary care that can really create that uh, free space or create that you know create that extra bed capacity at the secondary and tertiary level which is supposed to cater to secondary and tertiary care and not a uh, truly primary care and we do actually see a lot of primary care being catered to by the secondary and tertiary care and this is likely to become extremely efficient healthcare system also and this is going to give cost savings to the overall healthcare system because we do understand that providing services through the primary care is going to be perhaps the most cost effective mechanism of providing healthcare and is definitely going to be the bedrock of any strategy towards universal health coverage so i think i i just wanted to set this context for several of the speakers who have vastly richer experience uh, and and to share their experiences and how they see that how the this uh, this this continuum of care this use of digital technology in, in enabling that and the kind of the, the kiosk that we have seen here today how these are various elements within this broader healthcare ecosystem which can which can enable our vision towards an affordable healthcare so thank you very much and you know